This video demonstrates how to create uh, dynamic choices for either radio um, radio buttons, check boxes, or a drop-down list in a grid. So normally in a grid when you define a uh, drop-down control check box or radio button, the choices that appear uh, in each row of the grid are the same for all rows in the grid. But uh, you can see here that um, in this particular grid here, the choices that appear for each row are actually dependent on the value in the item type field. So as I change the value in the item type field, the list of choices change. So for example, if I go here and I choose uh, vegetable, you can see my list of choices has changed. If I go there and choose fruits, my list of choices has changed. So. Um, the ability to make um, the choices dynamic based on the value of another field is actually something that um, uh, is quite a common use pattern. So what we're going to talk about in this video is how we actually accomplish that. So um, I'm showing it here in the case of DBF tables, but the principle would be identical for uh, SQL tables as well. So the first thing that I'm going to do is um, I'm going to actually go here and I've got a field called foods right now and I'm going to unhide it so that you can uh, see more close more clearly what's going on so here are my here's the field foods which actually contains the choices that are being reflected here uh, in this uh, checkbox control so what I've done is first I've gone and I've created a dummy field um, so here I just said dummy equals null to create a dummy field if this was a SQL table in my SQL select statement I would have just created a field uh, a computed field in the SQL statement that said you know dummy uh, as uh, uh, quote quote as dummy to create a, a, a dummy field then I've gone to my fields list and I've put this dummy field uh, on the um, on the grid but um, what I've done is I've chosen the control type as custom. So um, this is where we're actually going to um, compute the dynamic choices for the checkbox control. So now when I go to the definition of this uh, custom control, and for those of you who've not worked with a custom control before, a custom control is just one of the available controls uh, that are available to you in a grid and in the case of a custom control you write your own HT your own XBasic to generate the HTML that's going to be shown in the control so let's go now to uh, the definition of this custom control and if I look here uh, you can see here that um, the custom controls HTML uh, is uh, returned by the function so this function dummy underbar render so dummy is the name of the field and then underbar render is the name of the function is going to return a uh, some HTML and you can see that we're wrapping the HTML in a div and we're giving it some arbitrary name I just happen to choose checkbox underbar and then I wanted the uh, ID for the first row to be checkbox underbar 1 and then the ID for the second row to be checkbox underbar 2 etc so the row number there is available in args dot row number so if you go there you can see args and then row number so that's the uh, row number of the row that's currently being rendered and then you can see here I'm calling an XBasic function that uh, was that I wrote, uh, which we'll look at next. So we're looking at this XBasic function, and we're passing into this XBasic function over here uh, three values: data dot food. So if I go here and I say insert data dot foods, so data dot foods is the value of the foods field from the current row. And then data dot item type is the value of the item type field from the current row and then finally args.row number is the row number of the current row and then finally um, we close the div over here so all that this um, uh, custom control HTML render function does is call an XBasic function which we'll discuss next and wrap the result uh, in a div so let's pause now and pick this up in the next video